What's up everyone? All right, well, here I am in St. Kitts and Nevis, back in the Caribbean. One of the things I really love about trading is the fact that you could do this from anywhere in the world. So, you know, I, as long as you've got an internet connection, that's what you need and I've got it. So I flew down here and my plan has been that I'll trade in the mornings, same as I do whenever I'm traveling, and then I enjoy the rest of the day. So this morning, got focused, sat down around 645 got my trading station set up and started looking for you know which stock today is the most obvious which one today has the potential to give us a big move you know i'm not looking for a stock that's just going to go up five or ten percent i want to find something that i think has the realistic potential of going up 45 50 percent maybe 100 percent on the day and man, today we got it. And I really am pleased with this because today I stayed very focused on waiting for the best quality setup. Now, this is, can be a little tricky being patient, but I was patient and we had a stock that popped up with news, was able to get a couple nice trades on it. And although I didn't get all the way to my daily goal today, I did get green. I'm grateful for that. I'm gonna live to trade another day. I think this market that we're in right now is a great market for focusing on base hits. Just locking up the base hit, be consistent, don't overstay your welcome, and then live straight another day. So we're gonna jump into the case study of today's biggest percentage gainer. This was the most obvious stock to trade. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into today's case study. So big picture, was I trading the right stock today? TGL currently is up 50% on the day. It went up to, gosh, it must have been just about 100% on the day where it, when it peaked over $8. So this put in a really solid move. It was definitely the right stock to trade. And my first entries, well, they were pretty early. So this hit a high today of, let's see, $8 and 69 cents. And my first entry was at $5 and 89 cents. So, you know, almost $3 a share in my favor. That's really solid. I can't complain about that at all. Now, I didn't make as much on it as maybe I could have if I'd been trading at home. As you guys know, I'm on my traveling trading station, um, which is fine. I, I trade on it usually about 20, 30% of the year. Uh, but today was day one, so I was just sort of getting set up. This computer that I'm on right now is the computer that I use at home for streaming. So I'll give you a little bit of a view here. So this is my streaming computer. And then at home, I have two computers. I have one for streaming and one for trading. The reason I use two different ones is because the streaming uses up a lot of resources and can sometimes slow down my computer. And I don't want to have that happen while I'm trading. So at home, I have two, one for trading, one for streaming. But when I'm traveling, I just bring the strongest one with me. And that's this one. It's a Falcon F30 laptop. And then this right here is a Asus monitor. These are super skinny little monitors. I love them. They're easy to travel with. You could put two, three, four of them in your carry-on, no problem. Uh, so that one's leaned up against a plant. I used to use these little clips, but they kept breaking. This one uh, got a little resourceful. This one's leaning up against the iron right here. It's actually perfect because it's got a nice little angle. So it kind of leans up right against it. I think that's just great. So using an iron and a plant as my um, part of my office trading station setup here, which is good. Uh, but anyway, so so TGL was without a doubt the right stock to trade, regardless of how much I made on it. And we'll, I'll show, share that with you, of course. But regardless of how much I made on it, it was the right stock to be focused on. So let's go ahead into um, full screen here. Okay, so TGL, this one, um, so I sat down this morning, I rolled over at like 6.45 to check the scans, and I saw that our leading gapper at that time was like 25, 30%. It was a terrible gap scanner this morning at 6.45. But I had to set up my traveling trading station anyways. I didn't do it last night because I was pretty exhausted. So I was like, well, I got to get up anyway. So I started setting things up. And it's good to do it a little early because sometimes you got to iron out a couple of little kinks. There's, you know, monitor resolution or something. The layout's a little funny. So anyways, did all that, sat down, um, loaded up the level two. And then right at 7 a.m., we had um, TGL start popping. 
So as it starts to pop up, I'm like, all right, well, what's the catalyst? So step one is to find the stock moving. Of course, I found it on my scans. And it was actually on my uh, small cap momentum scanner right here. I'd have to scroll way, way back, but it was on the small cap Momo scanner here. And then it was on, um, mo started moving up the top gainer scanner. See how this one right here has an arrow? Has an arrow because it's moving up. TRUG has an arrow down because it's moving down. Those two just swapped places. Um, but anyways, I, I find that helpful because I can see when a stock is moving up the scans. So TGL started moving up the scans. It wasn't in first place yet, but it was moving up. It's actually at um, second place right now in, in the screenshot. So I check the news and I don't see any news. So now I'm a little bit like, hmm. You know, the market was a little cold yesterday. Yesterday was a travel day for me. No trades in my small account, no trades in my Roth IRA account. So no recap yesterday. Um, I was watching the market from the airport. I had everything set up, but I didn't see anything worth trading, so I didn't trade. So then step three uh, is to look for an entry. So when I pulled up TGL on the daily chart, I saw that it's a somewhat recent reverse split. So I was like, okay, we've got a somewhat recent reverse split. Yes, I can understand that. That um, means the float's probably very low. And of course it is. It's a 700,000 share float. I'll put up my little uh, laser pointer here. So super low float here. Recent reverse split visible right there. And I thought, well, geez, this has a lot of room. <clears throat> if it starts to curl up to set, uh, 2750, up to 30, 32, 33, 34, 35. So I start trading it and I locked up about $2,321.37. Not bad on the traveling trading station, right? All things considered. But let's get into those specific entries. Okay, so I'm going to back out of this and we're going to jump on to the actual chart. So you'll notice that it began a little rocky. So my first trade, I was in right here for the break of $6. So it took a 2,000 share starter position at 588. It hits a high of 650, and I was like, wow, all right, this looks awesome. <clears throat> Anyways, it dips back down here, and I ended up selling it for about $900 of profit. So I got out. It drops all the way back down to 462, and I was like, uh-oh, maybe this is going to be another round trip. But as it curls back up, I got back in. It squeezed through 650. It goes up to 7, up to a high of 726. And right there, I'm locking up $1,100 of profit. Nice start to the day. So added back on the break through the high, high a day break, 650, squeeze up to seven. Then um, I made a little bit of a mistake. I took a bigger position right here, because now I've got a cushion for the squeeze up to 750. And I went back to flat. So I actually went down, is it $500? I think it was 500. I went down $500. So I was like, gosh, darn it. <clears throat> it sells off. A few minutes later, I get back in on this dip and I make back about 400. So I'm up or maybe just down 300 on the day. And then right here on this candle, as it started to pop up to 720, I punched it, got in again, and almost immediately it rejected. Drops to 670. That's a 50 cent drop. I stopped out and I was down $2,500. So now I'm like, all right, I got to be careful. I'm halfway to my max loss of $5,000. Um, and I reminded myself in that moment, there is such a thing as a successful red day. A successful red day is a small red day where you don't let your emotions get the best of you. You just lock it up and walk away. So it goes lower, comes back up, no trading in this area. But right here as it breaks over VWAP, I got back in. I got back in at six. Uh, I think it was 660, right as it broke this level, added at 75 and 85, it squeezed up to seven. I was looking for the push all the way up to 750, kind of stalled out. So I sold it, but on that trade locked up about $2,000 of profit. So now I'm still down 500 on the day or so, but not too bad. Um, does another rejection right here. This one does not trap me. This, this time I was like, well, let's be a little bit careful. Pulls back, but then when it comes back up here and holds, I added at $7.10, and this was a great trade because it squeezed all the way up to eight. And on that trade, I went from red on the day of 500 or whatever it was to green uh, 2300. So, you know, I had a $5,000 swing in my P&L today um, from my low of day to my high of day. And I tried to trade this again as it broke over eight. It flushed, stopped me out, but only small size. 
gave back maybe $150. I think at my peak, I was up $2,700. I'm up $2,497 right now. So gave back like $200 off the top. At the open, I really was concerned about flushes. And so I, although I took a couple trades, I was very quick on them and ended up not making any money really. Trade was small size. And then it halted down here at 950. So now we're sort of on the back side of the move. So also, although I wouldn't say this was the easiest stock that I've ever traded, um, was it the right stock to trade? And I think the answer is yes. Now, this is the candlestick chart, but now I want to start drawing in um, a little bit more detail to this. So I'm going to put my drawing tools up here. We're going to use an arrow. We're going to use the horizontal line and we're going to use the extended line. Okay. So <clears throat> let's see. Let's see, right? So I'm just going to start looking at this here. Um, there were a couple levels that I started kind of getting dialed in on. Um, so one area that we had some resistance um we had a little bit of resistance right here at about 660. so as it broke through this level i got in right here on this little pullback it squeezes up to eight pulls back and when it dropped back down here i bought this dip because i thought if it can hold this level that was previously resistance if that can become support on the intraday then i can work with that so we got that move back up and i was pleased with that um and then we had another level of resistance um, right around here at 720. So notice it sells off here, bounces from 720 right off that level all the way back up to eight. So, you know, I think it's these are good examples of support or resistance turning into support um, on this particular stock. Now it did end up breaking, but look at look at the way it respected that 720 level. You know, it was it was in play for quite a while, up over and under. Um, so, you know, it's just something to be aware of. And I think when you draw those trend lines, it'll make it a little easier for you to visualize these in real time. And what I like to do is I like to do a screen grab like that. And then um, I'll just save, I'll save that file and just put it in my archives with, you know, thousands of other charts just like it. And I label it and everything else. But what you might want to do is you might want to uh, grab a chart like that save it um support or re let's say resistance become support and print some of those out have them on you know pin them around your desk so you start to have these visual reminders of what you're looking for now for me the biggest thing i'm looking for is a stock that has the potential to make what i think is a big move so i want to see a stock that has ideally a float of less than 10 million shares i want to see that it's up at least 10 15 percent this one certainly met both of those criterias I would like to see if the stock has high relative volume. Now, if we look at the relative volume on this stock today, it's 314 times higher than average. That's fantastic. That's exactly what we look for. The price is great. Um, the only problem was that it didn't have a news catalyst and that made it a little confusing why it was up so much. Uh, I did not trade this in my small account today because it was not uh, leverage. There was no leverage available on it. So I could have traded it, but only with really small size. And so I didn't want to do that. Uh, a new episode of the Small Account Challenge is coming soon, so you guys can stay tuned for that. That's something um, you can look forward to. But no trades on this in the small account because of that leverage issue. So just traded it in my um, my retirement account, my Roth IRA, which means the gains are tax-free. So I pay no income tax on the profit. And when I take the profit out at retirement age, I will pay no tax on the withdrawals. So. I always try to focus on trading in my Roth IRA. Trading is one of the few things where you could work all day long trading, 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 and all that money you make can be completely tax-free. You can't do that working at a regular job, obviously. You have W-2 wages. You can't do that self-employed, like, you know, doing car detailing or cleaning gutters or anything like that. Like that's that's business income. You're self-employed. You've got then you've got self-employment tax. But trading is different. With trading, you can set up an account in a Roth IRA and you can trade in it as much as you'd like. And that's what that's what I do. And that's what I've been doing for a long time. Um, I, I think it's just terrific. Now, the the downside is that the money that I'm making here uh, on trading is getting locked away and I, I can't really spend it, right? 
But what I realized over the years was that there's a lot of other ways that I can make money that's taxable, but there's not very many ways I can make it where it's tax free. So I'm going to make as much as I can in a tax free uh, window or in, or I don't know what you call it a window, but the bucket. And then for taxable income, well, that's fine. I've got the software company, Warrior Trading. We've got subscriptions over there. Of course, I've got YouTube. I've got my book. And that's taxable income, you know, which is fine. But for when it comes to trading, I encourage you to trade as much as you can in a retirement account so you are saving that money. And then the other side hustles that there's no way you can put them into a tax-free account. Well, you know, then that's that. But the fact is right now, even if I make, let's say I only make $300,000 this year trading, it would be equivalent of someone making 700000 in a W-2 if they lived in California or New York because of state and federal income tax. It's kind of insane, right? Because after tax, it's how, I mean, how much are you walking away with after tax? You, if someone's making six, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand, but what's the after tax? So anyways, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record. You, you guys do what's best for you. And if you're an international trader, uh, your options are going to be different, but I'm a big fan of that. So nonetheless, TGL was the right stock to trade today. Now I did get a couple other trades. Um, I got a trade on Pixie, P-I-X-Y. Pixie came up on our scans this morning with some news commits to $100 million financing terms to initiate its human capital rollout. Um, so I jumped on that because it had popped up the other day, also has a ridiculously low float here of about 700,000 shares, 650, but ended up not really working out, sold it for um, $176 of profit. So whatever, nothing that exciting there. Um, TRUG, this one was on our scans as well. It's up 54%. It's a little cheaper than what I like. Uh, not easy in a small account because I don't have leverage on these low price stocks. Uh, big account, you know, sure, it's fine, but I, I won't make good money unless I buy 10 or 15,000 shares. And when they start popping on very light volume, I don't feel comfortable buying that many shares. So for breaking news, I kind of prefer stocks that are, I mean, not too expensive, but more like five to 10 and a little less under five. CETX is on the scans right now. Again, another low float stock. We've had a lot of these. Uh, overall market, you know, just to take a glance. Overall market, um, you know, it's hanging in there. We're in this tight channel, very tight channel. So uh, everyone's paying attention to um, Federal Reserve and the comments from the chair. So, you know, we'll see. Um, you know, we'll see what happens with the overall market. But in the meantime, uh, trading is good. We're making, I think we're, we're doing well. Most of us who are, who are active, you know, we're, we're, I think we're enjoying the fact that we're seeing more momentum in general than we saw a, maybe a year ago at this time, or certainly even six months ago at this time. So I would still contend that right now is a bit more base hit trading, base hit, base hit, base hit. Um, I'm kind of waiting for the next stock that goes totally bananas. That just goes like from four to eight to 12 to 14 to 16, like just goes insane because that'll probably start the next round of hot momentum. Sometimes those moves will happen in the afternoon after a lot of traders have kind of given up and walked away, whether we're red or green. Um, some shorts who stick around to kind of hope the stock just keeps fading all day long, start to get squeezed, and then they start to cover. And then all of a sudden the stock is going crazy. So we make sit down one of these mornings and, and realize, whoa, yesterday there was a huge move. And then we're looking for the next one that could be similar. And that's sort of how the FOMO kicks in for the next round of momentum. So I'm going to pay attention to that. And when that happens, I'm going to lean in and try to maximize on that window. But for right now, hitting base hits feels good. Uh, this week has been a little bit slow for me, given that Monday was only like a $2,000 green day. And or no, I'm sorry, it was, it was 1100 on Monday. And today is only 2500. So only up 3500 on the week right now. It's a pretty small week for me. But you know, that's okay. I missed yesterday. And well, I didn't really miss it. I mean, there wasn't anything before my flight left that looked good. So just a little slow right now. But the best thing I can do is uh, be patient. So be patient sit tight, wait for good quality setups to show up. And remember that it's okay to have a red day. You know, small red days are all right. A successful red day is a red day where, you know, you stay within your max loss limits. 
You don't do anything crazy. You don't revenge trade. You don't get emotional. You know, you don't throw everything that you know out the window and just start buying anything that's squeezing. Uh, so successful red days, they are required if you will be successful long term. Get good at having successful red days. Small red days are not a big deal. You should not, I, and I say this, but you shouldn't feel bent out of shape if you're down 500 bucks and your daily goal is like a thousand. You should not be bent out of shape about that. You've got to learn to just have those red days because once you start getting emotional and getting frustrated and you take that out in your trading, that's when you end up turning a $5,500 red day into a $5,000 red day. Uh, I say all this because I've been through all of it myself, including very recently last week when I dug myself a pretty big hole. So anyways, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. Uh, as always, those of you guys who are new to the channel, I hope you subscribe for more recaps like this and also for my longer form day trading strategy episodes. And I hope you guys hit the thumbs up and I'll see you back here tomorrow for my recap.